Hello, it's Don Michelle from Boho Tarot, and welcome to another Mod With Me, where we craft a creative connection to the decks in my collection. Today we are going to be de-gilding my Tarot of the Mystical Moments. So the Tarot of the Mystical Moments is a deck that I've quite fallen in love with over the last couple of weeks. I worked with it um, for a couple of weeks in April and I just absolutely adore the imagery in this deck. It's not really any surprise because I absolutely adore the imagery in the Oracle of Mystical Moments, which was the deck that came before this one. There is just something really special about about this particular artwork and the way that the creator has chosen to depict each of the cards in the deck in this really magical yet very succinct way. And I really like, look at this Four of Swords, just beautiful. This is one of those decks that there's really not one image in here that I don't like. There's not anything about this deck in terms of its creation or in terms of its structure or the artwork that the um, artist has chosen to use to depict each of the cards. I have zero complaints about it as far as that is concerned. However, when it comes to actually working with this deck, and I knew this was going to be an issue going in as soon as I saw it um, in videos, and then of course got my own copy of it, is that it is silver gilded. And I have an issue a lot of times when publishers choose to put this gilding on here. It's the cheaper stuff. I don't really know what it's, what it's made from, but it chips really badly. There's already chips in this deck, and I've only used it for about two weeks now. I've got chips all in it and the edging just feels um, kind of sharp and just not very inviting for me to hold. I'm also not a huge fan of the glossy cardstock, but I can totally live with that if it didn't have the gilding on the sides. So it's really no surprise, I'm sure, to anybody who's heard me complain about gilded decks on my channel. I know this is not a newsflash. They're not my favorite. Um, that I've decided to go ahead and take the gilding off. Now this can be a little bit of a challenge when you have a deck like this that is beautifully borderless, which I am so thankful for. I think it looks fantastic. We have these gorgeous tidal areas at the bottom, full color borderless on three sides, just absolutely stunning. But that does mean that in order to take the gilding off, I kind of have two choices. I can either sand it off, which is something that I've heard lots of people talk about doing, or I can do what I prefer to do, which is just take a sliver and trim it off. So let's talk real quickly about those two options. I have never personally sanded gilding off a deck. I have seen many people do it and I have heard that it works well for a lot of people. But my hesitation with doing that is one, it sounds like it's gonna be a big mess. I know that if I go to sand other craft projects that I'm working on, that sometimes I end up with those little dust particles that really um, irritate my asthma and my allergies. And so I try to avoid anything that throws stuff up into the air um, whenever I can. So there is that consideration for me. The other consideration is that this is not wood. This is paper essentially, layers and layers of paper um, with a coating over the top of it, which means it's not going to hold up to sanding the way um, a piece of wood would. No pun intended there. So I'm hesitant to sand a deck in any way, shape, or form just because I'm afraid that if I'm not super careful, I will end up peeling up some of the layers of either the laminate that's over the top of top and back of the cards or the printing that's on it or pieces of the um, inside core. I just, I'm afraid that I would ruin it. <laughs> so that's never really an option for me because of my allergy asthma issues as well as my own trepidation about um, ruining my deck. Now granted I had some of those same fears when I first started cutting into my decks but I feel like I have a lot more control over how much I cut and how I go about the cutting process versus sanding where I feel like I'm kind of at the mercy of, of the pressure that I use, the sanding application that I use. So that's definitely not my preferred method for removing gilding. However, it is totally a valid method and I have seen lots of people do a absolutely beautiful and fantastic job sanding their decks down and taking the gilding off. For me today, what I'm going to do is very carefully just cut the gilding off this deck, which basically means that yes, I am going to end up slicing the tiniest little bit of the artwork off, but hopefully that will be the tiniest little bit because I really don't wanna lose any of this artwork. 
Thankfully, the back is pretty much what would we could, would consider a borderless um, copy. There's no white border, in other words, around this. So if I take just a sliver off, it's not really going to affect the back at all. The only thing I need to be careful about is when I'm getting down to this bottom to make sure that I'm not accidentally cutting into my words. And they are fairly close to the bottom, so I am going to have to be pretty careful and take just the minutest layer off. So that's the plan for today. We're just going to trim all of the gilding off and get rid of it. And then I'm going to corner around the deck and re-edge it with some stamps that I got, probably in a similar way to the way I edged the um, Oracle deck. But we'll see when we get into that because I never really 100% know what colors I'm gonna do until I actually get through the whole trimming process. And I've had the time to work with the deck in that way and look at what colors I might want to incorporate into the edge itself. So that's the plan for today. So let's go ahead and get started. So before we jump in, let's talk tools real quick. I do have a complete video on all of the tools that I use for my deck modifications. If you want to check that out, it will be linked in the description box below for you. But just to go over them real quick, I have my Fiskars trimmer here. I have my triangle ruler, which I will use to create a guide on the other side, my washi tape to hold that down. I have a regular ruler where the width is the same between the guard and the blade so that I can see exactly where my blade's going to come down. And I have my corner rounder for when I'm done trimming. Now of course we'll be talking about what inks I'm using when we get to that point but I always like to get the deck trimmed first before I jump into any kind of colors and edging because sometimes things change as I'm working with the deck. So what we're going to do now is actually use our title card and I am just, just going to do this with my usual process of using my little guide to create a cradle so that I can cut all of the sides at once. That's what helps get a pretty straight cut. I like to say as straight as humanly possible because it's impossible to get a machine cut doing this in any way by hand. So I'm going to use my little um, title card here because another great thing is we're not really looking at trying to follow any borders or anything like that. I'm just looking to trim that gilding off. So I'm going to go for taking the least amount off because I want to retain as much of the card as I possibly can. And that hopefully should get me that gilding off without removing a ton of the artwork. So I've basically just slid that in there just just to the outside so that that blade is going to just take this tiniest sliver of the deck off of the side off which should hopefully remove that gilding so what i'm doing here is just placing a little guide down so that um, i can create a cradle and that makes this whole process go a lot faster especially once you get the hang of it because then rather than having to kind of reset these measurements every time I can just slide the cards right on through. So I've got that laid down there. I do always like to check this and make sure that it is straight as well because sometimes I don't get things in there very straight. And I like where that's at so we're going to make our first cut. And so you can see here that I took a sliver like an actual sliver but it was enough to remove that gilding and I didn't end up cutting off too much of the actual deck. I also didn't come down totally straight and I could tell that when I pulled this out because it didn't look like it was even all the way down. And I really, I did not like where that was sitting to be perfectly honest. So I'm actually resetting it, which occasionally I will do, which is handy to do before you start cutting into the actual cards. There, I am feeling like that's lined up a little bit better and is going to hopefully take off even less. Okay, so there we go. Gilding removed, just a sliver, right? And I've pretty much retained all the artwork. So that should be just fine. So now I can just go through here and slip my cards in and just go through and trim this side off. And then I'll be able to basically just flip the deck around and repeat this process and just take off those little slivers on all four of the sides so that I can get that gilding removed. Now I am gonna be extra careful when I come down to the bottom here because that 
is going to be a, a harder area because there's not much space between the edge and the words. So I'm going to have to make sure that I really am getting everything as close to the edge as possible. So I'm going to go ahead and just finish de-gilding my Tarot of the Mystical Moments just by trimming it off. And hopefully you'll be able to see here in just, well, a, a matter of moments for you, what it looks like when I've taken off that gilding. It should pretty much look the same because as you can see that this is what I'm removing just teeny tiny little slivers so it's not really going to affect the artwork at all which is fantastic so I'm going to go ahead and finish trimming this deck up getting that gilding off and then we'll move on to the fun part which is edging the deck okay so I have finished trimming off all the gilding on this deck and I have rounded the corners. I just used the medium round, um, medium size on my corner rounder and you can see now that it is all back to just plain cardstock, um, raw edge here, no more gilding and it did make it a little bit smaller which is kind of nice but you can see that it didn't affect the artwork at all because I just took those teeny tiny little slivers off. So nothing real traumatic um, in terms of what I edged or what I trimmed. And the artwork still looks exactly the same. Um, the title area, everything still looks the same. All I did was basically trim off the silver gilding. So now that I have it completely de-gilded, I can go ahead and start edging the deck. And I have put my pad down here just because I'm going to be working with um, stamps and that could be a little bit messier. So one of the things that I wanted to do was kind of emulate the design that I did or the edging that I did on the um, Oracle deck by the same creator. So this is the Oracle of the Mystical Moments in case you haven't seen it. Um, I know myself and a lot of other people were hoping that the tarot deck would be on the same cardstock and the same size, but it was not because this is a beautiful kind of, not really matte, but more of a satin finish. And it's a great cardstock, but um, you can see here that I've edged it in these kind of, hopefully that will pick up on camera, but I've edged it in these kind of worn, um, kind of weathered look here. I did use a color to match the back originally and then added all of that, what I call antiquing onto it so that it would give it a, an aged effect. And basically I'm just gonna try to recreate that on this deck because I think it looks beautiful. And I really I really love to do um, kind of the multi-tone antiquing aged effect on my decks that have more of that um, kind of older art style. I just think it looks really pretty and I think it really matches the energy of the deck well. So we're going to try to emulate that pretty much. And I do not remember exactly what stamps I used originally. Um, I do know that I used the distressed ink to create the distressing on the sides, but I do need a base color. And so I think for this, we're going to um, try to find a base color I, I think I might have used the like shabby shutters from the distressed ink, but to be perfectly honest, the distressed ink, um, which is, you know, this stuff here, isn't really meant to fill. It's meant to just age things. So it's meant to create this kind of textured layer look over the top of things. And it's not really meant to be full saturation. So using it as a base, um, just totally on its own, can sometimes be a little bit tricky, especially if you're working with a darker color because it's hard to get that full saturation on the cards. It's great for going over the top of things and adding texture and layer, but not always the best choice for just your base color. So while I am going to be using some distressed inks to antique the deck, I do want to start with a more solid base cover just to make this process go a little bit faster. And I'm thinking maybe one of these um, greens that I have here. I think I used more of a beige color on the Oracle and I'm okay with them being a little bit different. Now these are the Versa um, Magic. They are chalk ink and they do work a little bit differently than the um, 
see the the metallic brilliant stamps that we see um, used so often for metallic edging um, because it, it just works beautifully for that. So the first thing that I'm going to do is get my base coat down and for this I'm just going to basically run this stamp all along the edge and then take my paper towel. I only need one, not two. And I can see it um, running over the back. It's actually the same color and now it's on my hands. So it actually blended in really well, but I don't want any of that to be on the front or really on the back, but yeah, I think that's gonna be a good color match. Um, these do dry fairly quickly, um, but like I said, you do have a grace period in order to uh, get the excess off, which I really like because I've mentioned it a hundred times before, but when I take the time to trim a deck, it really irritates me when my um, edging medium puts a border back on. It's just a huge pet peeve of mine. At least when I'm not intending for it to. There are occasions where I will intentionally run ink onto a the front or back of a card, but that's very, very rare. In fact, I can only think of one deck that I did that with, and that was my um, Nicoletta Ciccoli, because I wanted it to have a really grungy look. So all I'm going to do is basically lay down my base coat here. And I think that these this color is going to work really well. Um, it's light enough that if I got, you know, a few cards in and I discovered, mm, I don't really like that, I can always change it. The other thing with the chalk ink is that once it dries, um, you actually can do... Uh, sometimes you can do lighter colors over darker colors um, and they will show up because it kind of goes over, runs over the top of anything you put it on. And so if I decided, you know, I wanted to do something different there, it depends on the card stock. It's always hard to say, you know, this will definitely work for this every time because it really does depend on the card stock. But um, for the most part, it, it does cover really well. So I'm gonna do, maybe we'll do half the deck and check back in so you can see what what it looks like. Okay, so I've got a few cards drying out here yet, but I've edged roughly half the deck in our primary um, color just so that you can see. See, I think it's a nice match. I'll try not to mix them in. Um, here's what they look like with the backs. I, I mean, I think it's almost a perfect match to the back which is fantastic. So I'm gonna finish laying down the base color on the rest of the deck and then we'll take a look at kind of adding that antique edging. <laughs> look at my stamp though. Um, the chalk ones don't really hold up quite as well to this, um, to this edging, but I am also kind of putting on a thick layer. So just because I, I only wanna do one coat of my base and I don't wanna come back and do it again. So I'm kind of laying it on a little bit thick and pressing probably a little bit harder than I need to, but it, it is really eating into my stamp. So I'm gonna to try to be a little bit more careful on this next stack. Okay, so I have the base layer done with the Versa Magic Chalk in Sage. And it came out, I think this really nice color that matches the backs really well. Um, so now at this point, what I wanna do is kind of distress it like I did with the Oracle deck. So I'm gonna take a chunk of the deck and we're gonna get the vintage photo. And since I'm not using the stamp pad directly on it, we can use the big one. I'm just going to kind of smush these together as best I can and then use this. The only problem with a new new pad is you kind of have to get it, get it going. I also want to mention that I was able to um, kind of fix my stamp pad, you can see here, by basically peeling off the top layer and that allowed me to actually kind of have a, a little bit of a fresh a fresh surface for it. Not sure if you're supposed to do that or not, but it ended up working. So I just want to kind of make sure I'm not getting it too dark. And 
That works really nicely, actually. Just going to kind of brush this on. So now we're just going to go and wipe off any excess that might have worked its way in between. So I think the stamp pad actually worked really well for that. Now I know I have heard um, some people who edge their decks in big groupings like that straight from the get-go. Um, I have never really been one to do that because I don't like the bleed over that happens when you get the ink oozing between the cards. But the Distress ink is not um, it's not a wet, well it's wet, but it's not a liquidy ink and so, sorry they're catching all the lights, um, and so it doesn't really ooze between the cards too much so you can do kind of a block of them like that. And I'm also not trying to saturate, right? I'm not trying to get full color, I'm just kind of trying to add a little bit of texture and um, layer to it. So that uh, means I'm not pressing down really hard. I'm just kind of brushing it on a little bit. And so it works really well to just do a small chunk of them at a time, but I do still go through the whole process, as you can see here, of wiping every card off just to make sure that I didn't get any um, distressed ink oozing in between because I don't want any of that on the front or back of my cards, just on the sides. Now this is probably light enough that if I left it, you probably wouldn't be able to see it and it would probably just blend right in. But there is that one edged and here is a section that doesn't have the distressed ink on it. So you can see it's just a, a minor difference. Um, it probably shows up more in person than it does on camera, but it does add a really nice vintagey look to the deck, which I think makes it look um, really pretty and just really matches the energy, I think, of, of this particular deck. So I have finished degilding and re-edging the Tower of the Mystical Moments and I think it came out really well. So I ended up doing this green to match the back and then distressing it with the um, Tim Holtz Distress ink. And I think it just, it matches the energy of the deck so much better for me than that shiny gold gilding did. Plus it's much more um, comfortable in my hands. I didn't end up having to remove any of the artwork. So I was able to keep that all intact, kept all the titles. I just basically trimmed off that silver gilding and just re-edged it in a color that I thought matched the deck and the tone and the theme so much better than again, that super shiny gilding. So I am really pleased with the way that it came out. I think it looks fantastic. So basically what I used to do this was my trimmer to cut all the gilding off. And then I used the Versa Magic chalk ink in the sage. And that was my base coat, which got me this um, green color that really matched the back beautifully. And then I gave it a distressed kind of vintagey look by just applying a light layer over um, the whole edges with the distressed ink and vintage photo. And that's pretty much how I got this really worn, beautiful vintage look, which I think matches the um, theme of the deck really, really well. So while I was kind of in the midst of this whole process, I also decided to take off the gilding on my Ostara Tarot. Um, this was a deck that I had been working with and same thing, shiny silver gilding that was that cheap stuff that was just chipping off and it really, really bothered me. So I happened to find a bunch of um, chalk ink colors that I thought would go really well with this deck. And so I used those to create this um, sort of variegated color effect. I'll bring it in here so you can see it. Um, what I was really going for was to match the backs where we have this um, kind of lighter green in the center, which we can see here. Hopefully that will pick up on camera. These sort of outer green, um, darker green around the outside, and then these pops of pink or this mauve color in the center here. And that's really what my inspiration was for um, this particular deck was to match the backs because I think they look really, really beautiful. And I just, again, that silver gilding just not only does it bother my hands and makes it uncomfortable for me to work with but I just don't feel like it really fits the energy of the tech either and so I feel like this kind of a edging effect really fits the energy a lot better and I really really do love the way that it came out so I think it looks really pretty so to um, get that effect what I did was um, basically let's just pull a chunk up so I can kind of 
show you um, because I did not do this one on camera. I just did this one kind of as I was waiting for different um, pieces of this particular one to, you know, dry or move on or take a break from. Um, you know, corner rounding can get kind of hard on your hands after a while. Um, so to create this effect, basically what I did was I went through and added this Versa Magic. And again, this is the chalk ink in Malted Mauve. And I brushed this on every card individually. So not not as a whole like this, but just one card at a time. I did um, both sides in just this pink in the center. Then, you know, and then wiped off all the excess. I probably should have done this one on camera because it was actually quite an intensive little process, but sometimes I just kind of get into the flow and then just don't think to turn the camera on. So then I took this um, Versa Magic, again, chalk ink, and this was the Aqua Splash, and I added this green... Um, tint. Hopefully you can see it here, this kind of green highlight on either side of the mauve. And again, doing one card at a time, just kind of running it here and running it here on both sides. Now, I did find that I had to kind of touch up over the um, mauve when I was doing this because the chalk ink will layer up and so when I put it, um, put the green over, it was kind of taking up too much of the pink. So I put a little here, put a little here on each individual card, then kind of redid the pink again and wiped them all off and moved on to the next card. So again, still doing this process one card at a time. That um, really keeps it so that everything is right where I want it to be and it's not bleeding over in any way, shape or form. Then I took this Versa Magic, um, again, chalk ink in Oasis Green, and I did the corners here and both ends. And so that color wraps around from each of the corners around the top and bottom back to the other side. And so I did that again for each and every card, wiping them off in between to make sure that I'm not getting a bunch of um, bleeding. And then to top it all off, because if you look at the back of these cards, there's a bit of a kind of distressed look to them. And I just thought that was really pretty. And the colors were a little bit bright. So to kind of tone them down and add that distressed look to it, I went over it, um, same as you saw me do with the vintage photo in this deck, but I went over it with the black soot in the distressed ink. And I did it very lightly because it's black, it's very, very dark. And I really didn't want black. I wanted more of a gray tone that we see here in this cards. And so I did that just a very light layer over the top, just in places kind of moving from the center outward and onto the top, just to kind of tone it down a little bit, add a little bit of that distressed look to it, a little bit more of that faded look. And I think it came out really, really well. So that one was quite labor intensive. Um, I actually did that one evening. Well, the day I started this, cause we're on a totally different day now. Um, I started this the day before and was letting, um, kind of giving my hand a break as I was corner rounding it. And so I thought, well, while I give my hand a break from corner rounding, I'll just trim this deck. And then once I kind of got into this and then I found my colors and I got excited, I just went ahead and finished edging it all in one night. And um, then I came back and finished this one today. So a little bit of an impromptu de-gilding and re-edging of the Ostara Terra 2, but we did get to see the whole process with the Terra of the Mystical Moments. And I am really loving working with this deck, but now I really love it even more now that I've taken that gilding off and I've edged it in something that's a little bit more pleasing to me. I'm excited to have them both kind of de-gilded and a little bit more accessible for us now. But I would love to know what your thoughts are on gilding. Um, do you like it? Do you leave it on? Do you cut it off? So please feel free to share with me in the comments below. Thank you for joining me today. You'll find links for everything featured here in the description box below. I hope you enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you again soon for more creative tarot for an inspired life.